let us continue our discussion on ophthalmology. Shivaji, Priyanka, Jaswinder, Anuj, Rituraj, Ravi, everybody. Can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear, doctor? Yeah. Next another four or five days we will discuss uh, ophthalmology only of the PGI question bank, AIMS question bank, etc., etc. So after that we will move on to some other subject. Yeah. So post cataract infection can be prevented by basically post operatively we give topical antibiotics which play the major role in um, uh, decreasing the post cataract infection which is a major challenge especially when you conduct uh, the uh, rotary club or government programs of cataract operations post operative infection control becomes a major challenge for you vernal conjunctivitis what are the five bullet points that you need to know about vernal conjunctivitis shield ulcers Hornus strantus spots and papillary hypertrophy are the classical features of the vernal conjunctivitis. Whereas Herbert's pitch pan is, they're all Trachoma story. So, you have a giant papillary conjunctivitis, as what you can see. One of the varieties. The large size papillae. Mainly because of the allergic response, if you put a contact lens or if there is any processes or if there is any left out nylon suture, they all can predispose to giant papillary conjunctivitis. There will be a stringy discharge and uh, papillary hypertrophy on the upper tarsus classically and uh, here there is a role for disodium chromoglycate. And uh, steroids are not much of use for the management of giant papillary conjunctivitis. So you should know different forms of allergic keratoconjunctivitis, vernal conjunctivitis, giant papillary conjunctivitis, etc., etc. You need to be doubly sure about. Now, what is the cause of the cataract is a very important uh, question. There are many causes. That is infrared, UV rays, obesity, etc., etc. So even a penetrating trauma or a blunt trauma or an electric shock, infrared radiation, ionizing radiation, anything can be responsible is what you have to be doubly sure about. Now, floaters, you will find your neat PG rank floating before your eyes. When you are watching into the sky while preparing for entrance exam, sitting in the garden outside the reading room, why do you get floaters? A lot of us get a lot of times floaters. Floaters are a normal phenomena that uh, there will be small thing flowing before our eyes. But vitreous hemorrhage, if there is a diabetic retinopathy, um, are the slides not clear? Is it okay? <clears throat> yeah, so whenever the diabetic retinopathy is there, when there is a vitreous neovascularization and bleeding into the vitreous leading to vitreous hemorrhage, floaters is one of the presenting feature. So diabetic retinopathy is a silent killer. It is asymptomatic in the early stages, but whenever the disease progresses, it leads to blurred vision, floaters, flashes, fluctuating vision, poor night vision, impaired color vision, whenever the central part, fovea and all these are involved and there is a dark areas in the vision, etc, etc, become the presenting feature. Now, um, if you look at the vitreous hemorrhage, this is a typical fundus of a patient who is having vitreous hemorrhage. What are the causes for the vitreous hemorrhage? One of the favorite questions of the examiner. In the infancy and in children, in small children, pediatric age group, the birth trauma, shaken baby syndrome, and the child abuse 
retinopathy of prematurity and uh, congenitally there is an entity called X-linked retinoscus. Any of them can lead to development of the vitreous hemorrhage. Whereas in the middle age, Eels disease, trauma are the important uh, underlying causes. And in the old age, it is a exudative age-related macular degeneration, diabetes, branch retinal vein occlusion, and uh, the, these are the important underlying uh, causes. So, how does vitreous hemorrhage present itself as? Painless visual loss, floaters, a shadow or a red hue or a scotoma, photopsia is another important presenting feature of the, um, of the vitreous hemorrhage is what you need to remember. And if you happen to throw the light, then the red fundus reflects. How will the fundus look like when you look through the ophthalmoscope? A lot of times as an intern, or a medical student, we forget to take uh, ophthalmoscope. But regularly you see, peep into that small hole of the pupil and then check the retina. Until you get a cervical spondylosis, you keep on practicing it on every patient. That should come out of certain fashion. Then you will appreciate the myriad secrets of the retina, which are revealed by your simple ophthalmoscope that you carry to the hospital. So, that red fundus reflex will be absent. You can't view the fundus. Then you will find red blood cells in the anterior vitreous. And uh, um, these are the important uh, clinical signs whenever there is a vitreous hemorrhage. So, how do you basically manage the diabetic retinopathy? If there is retinal detachment, you need to reattach it with surgery. If there is a retinal break, you can close it with a laser photocoagulation or a cryotherapy. And if there is a proliferative retinal vascular disease, then you need to treat it with either laser photocoagulation or the cryotherapy is what uh, you have to basically remember. Now comes a very important question in case of the vitreous hemorrhage. What are the indications of doing a pars plena vitreectomy? In a case of the vitreous hemorrhage is a very important uh, MCQ in the ophthalmology. Vitreous hemorrhage with a detached retina is an indication for pars plana vitreectomy. Long-standing vitreous more than 2 to 3 months duration. Similarly, if there is a rubiosis iridis, if there is a neovascularization extending into the iris with rubiosis iridis, Along with vitreous hemorrhage becomes an indication for pars plana vitreectomy. Vitreous and the remaining components are also removed. And uh, if there is any ghost cell glaucoma with vitreous hemorrhage, indication for pars plana vitreectomy. And uh, a vitreous hemorrhage which is isolated, you need to do even without retinal detachment also, you may need to do the vitreectomy. In case of juvenile onset diabetes sometimes, whenever a patient is having bilateral vitreous hemorrhage, that becomes a, a very important uh, underlying indication even without the retinal detachment is what I want to underscore to all of you. So now you are all experts. Examiner, if he happens to ask what are the indications for pars plana vitreectomy, what are the causes of the vitreous hemorrhage, everything you should emphatically be sure to answer in the tomorrow's exam. It's all anatomy, doctor, nothing. Ophthalmology, for you to understand, you just need to go back to anatomy. There is one retina, there is one vitreous, there is a uh, iris, where is the choroid, where is the ciliary body. And uh, how is the pupil formed? What is cornea? What is clera? What is limbus? What is aqueous humor? What is anterior chamber? What is posterior chamber? Bus. If you know clearly where is what in the eyeball, which we study in 8th class biology, it's more than enough. Entire ophthalmology, you can be able to imagine uh, closing your eyes. Right?
at least for entrance exam that will be needed. 